Hello, I'm John Bunch, Black Dragon. I appreciate taking out a few moments of your day while we talk about these things that interest us in the world of motorcycle clubs that we all love so well, so well trying out a new get back braid I don't know if I like this one or not it's all getting entangled in everything I don't suppose these things are too safe but how could you ride without one um, so um, tell you a few things first one is uh, I hope that you're seeing the uh, videos that I've been doing with Big Cell uh, from FHO Fast Harleys Only you can find him on FHO on uh, YouTube incredible speaker has a lot of knowledge he's also the National Secretary of the Kings of the South Motorcycle Club so um, great stuff that he does over there with Fast Harleys Only on his YouTube channel and rumor has it Big Cell's writing a book can't wait to see it. Um, also, my book Prospects Bible is available at prospectsbible.com and you can also get it on Amazon or Kindle. And also, uh, Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs is available at prospectsbibleforwomen.com and it's also available on Kindle. And finally, the Motorcycle Club PRO's Bible, mcprosbible.com. It's also available on Kindle and Amazon, and uh, these books are available uh, at your disposal. Oh. And I hope that you uh, avail yourself to them. So uh, I got a message today. A guy says, um, hey, Black Dragon, I just finished reading your book, Prospects Bible, and I love it. I love it when they say that. And uh, only thing is, you got to read it more than once. And I do hope that people study it uh, and, and get the benefit of it. And he's, he had a question. He said, um, so what do you do when you're a prospect and you're assigned to watch your president? He's partying all night long. And they won't let you go home, even when you have to go to work the next day. So, uh, what do you do? And uh, I thought about that, and I write about this in the book Prospects Bible. And I, I think that um, if I wasn't clear about it in the book Prospects Bible, I'd be clear about it here. There's a few things that go on when you're prospecting for a motorcycle club. And I always talk about 99% motorcycle clubs because I'm a 99%er. What they do in outlaw motorcycle clubs, I don't know. I don't know what that prospect ship is like. But in 99% motorcycle clubs, like mine, we, uh, we have a, uh, this idea that the motorcycle club comes after three things. That is God, family, and job. After God, family, and job comes the motorcycle club. So if there's a situation where someone is asking you to do something that violates that, if you're in a 99% or motorcycle club, I can't imagine what that could be. Because Hello, cutie. Ninety-nine percenters. We, you know, we're not making our money uh, with the club in most cases. So, why on earth would someone have you um, doing something that would violate your ability to feed your family, or even for even a moment put that in jeopardy? So, it brings up a interesting topic for me for prospects. Uh, and maybe even members and that is uh, at what time is it okay or is it permissible or even when should we tell the motorcycle club no uh, I'm not doing that doesn't work for me and um, no so there's a few tenets to know first of all 
you should know as a prospect what your bylaws say about that. Do your bylaws specifically address the priority that the club falls in when, uh, with respect to duties that you have for the club? Um, and another thing that you have to realize is that the prospect period is a time of measurement. It's the club measuring you to see if you're worthy, and it's you measuring the club to see if the club is worthy of your time and talents. You know, it's like going out with a woman, and if you're going to decide whether or not you want to marry her, you have to determine, is she bringing something to the table, or are you the only person bringing something to the table? It's not always a good feeling to be the only person bringing something to the table, even when you're dealing with a motorcycle club. Are you the only one bringing something to the table? It's take, 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 no give, give, give. If that's the case, why get yourself involved with them in the very first place? That's the beautiful thing about the prospect period. The prospect period doesn't like set in stone that you've got to hang out people that are not considerate of your time. The prospect period is a time where you get to decide, are you good for them and are they good for you? Is it a good fit? And a fit fits both ways. These are things to think about when you're prospecting. And one thing that's really crazy is to be prospecting and you've never seen the bylaws. If your club's not giving you the bylaws, the expectations, what they expect from you, and what you expect from them, and what's going to be given, if you don't even have any clue about your bylaws, what the hell are you prospecting for? I've heard motorcycle clubs say you don't get your bylaws until such time as you go, you cross over. That doesn't make any common sense. I'm, I'm swearing myself to something that I know nothing about until I get inside of it. I tell you what, uh, if we were getting in the society, society of motorcycle gurus, maybe that might be something. But we're a 99% motorcycle club, and I want to know what I'm pledging my allegiance to. And if it's not something that I can deal with, I want to know now before I get five or six or some months or a year into this thing. And I'm still prospecting, only to find out that you guys are not people that your bylaws are not bylaws that I would agree with in the first place. So I would advise you to look at your bylaws and see what your bylaws have to say about the priority of the club and where the club business falls within uh, what it is that you're doing. Uh, a president that would ask you to continue to stay with him at a party and he knows that you've got to work in the morning might not be a president that's out for your interest in the first place. He might be an immature president. He uh, might have a little growing that he needs to do uh, himself. And that's okay. I mean, we all have growing to do. But remember this, Prospect. You are a man first. You are a grown-up. You are... You are... I don't know any motorcycle club that lets you get in at under 18 years of age. So you're a grown-up. You're 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 responsible to feed your family. You're responsible to take care of those loved ones. And the job doesn't want to hear that you can't stay awake because you were guarding the president last night. You decided to stay out till four in the morning, knowing full good and damn well that you had to go to work in the morning. But did you tell him you had to go to work in the morning? You're a man first. And at some point, sometimes, you got to tell a person, here's where I get off. I get off the bandwagon right here. Now, if you want to punish me, that's fine. You're a man, accept the punishment. If you want to add time to me, that's fine. But I let you know before we even started down this road, I had to go to work in the morning, and I'm going to do that. I mean, just imagine if your job is uh, an emergency medical room technician, and uh, you missed... Uh, closing up my wound because you were too damn tired to see straight or maybe you were flying an airplane or you're a high wire guy like the mayor of the mob up there on one of them huge ass high wires um forgive my cursing and all of a sudden you take a wrong step and fall 43 stories because you were up partying all night you have a job and a responsibility those people are paying you to do something and you need to make sure you get that done so this idea about uh and there's some other things you know, when you think about prospecting, a lot of the younger clubs look at prospecting almost like pledging, a fraternity or something like that. And I always draw a distinction between fraternities and prospecting. Because fraternities is something you do as a kid in school with people that you're really not going to be around after you graduate from school. 
college brings all these people together from all these disparate locations, and you come together and form a family, and you're the such and such uh, uh, bio mago fey thing, uh, theta epsilon q. You're all this stuff, and it's really cool for that four or six years you're in school, or eight or twelve, but. When you get out of school, you normally go back home somewhere to some some destination. And that brotherhood kind of depletes. When you're at a motorcycle club, you're in a place where you're at home with your people, your friends. You're, it's a little bit more mature. So I don't look at private for most like for a fraternity. Stay in your lane, please. So what that means is I look for prospecting for a motorcycle club or probation, probating, whatever you want to call it. I look at that as a serious function and a serious junction. And I'm not looking to make you do stupid things. For instance, I once saw a motorcycle club. I wrote about this in Prospects Bible. It had a guy standing out in a club around a whole bunch of other people with a sign over his head. And he's standing with this sign over his head and he's just shaking and he's... He's all shaken, and this guy is his, his, his sponsor, I took it. His sponsor sitting up there looking at the guy, watching to see how long he could hold this dumbass sign up. Forgive my cussing. And um, he, the only break he got from this sign was to go get the sponsor something to drink. Now, a motorcycle club is supposed to be prospecting a prospect, and a prospect is proving his worth to the motorcycle club. And... Are, am I proving my worth to you by you um, destroying my credibility and making me look like a fool in front of people? Uh, is that how you get your worth by making me lose my self-worth and self-value? Um, I'm expecting that a prospect will be taught how to ride in the pack. I'm expecting a prospect will be taught sacrifice. I'm expecting a prospect would be taught the history of the MC. I'm expecting that a prospect would be asked to get his ass up, forgive my cursing, in the middle of the night to go get a brother off the side of the road, not stand up and hold an effing sign. Are you serious? Go do that in high school. Go do that in college. I don't know a motorcycle club that wants people laughing at it. Motorcycle clubs are proud and the people are proud. We're proud of what we do. We're proud of our display. We're proud of our get down. We want people to look at us and say, Oh, look at those cats, they're so bad. Not laughing at our members as they walk around with signs over their heads looking like retards. Don't let nobody do that to you, man. You are a man first. Respect yourself. Anybody who disrespects you needs to have a hard effing way to go. I love my man Big Shell always says, <laughs> I'm not the toughest guy on block, but if you take a swing, then we can fade. I'm not quite sure what we can fade means, but I think it means you can get you some. And uh, get you some you will uh, if you disrespect me. Because we're going to fade all day and all night long, or as long as my old buck can handle with as many breaths as I can take. So you are a man that your mama raised and your daddy raised before you are anything with a patch on your back or a military uh, insignia on you, or, or a police badge, or uh, a mason badge, or any of those things that we hold dear. You're a man before you're any of that. And always conduct yourself, or in a women's motorcycle club, or a mixed club, you're a woman. Always conduct yourself in a manner that is respectful to you. And about the second that you feel that you're being disrespected is about the time that you let a sucker have it. And if he's a brother, he'll understand. I stepped over the line and you got in my ass. But baby Bubba, but we're still friends. So, when is it okay to tell the club no? When the club has asked of you something that you cannot in good conscience do. Like your damn job for my cursing. That's not a good time to be asking me to do something. I got these kids I gotta feed. I got this rent I gotta pay. I got this iron horse that I gotta feed. And 
man, unless y'all are talking about replacing my income, I gotta go home, dog. So if you wanna add too much to my time, go ahead and do that. But what president is not looking after the best interest of his men? Or women, or men and women. Traditional motorcycle club would be men. What president is not looking after his auxiliary? Who, and you know, I'm the worst. I, you know, people that, are, that know me are like, uh, I know he is not saying this as many times as he's made my butt stay up with him all night, especially if freight train is out there watching. Uh, he used to have to, he, <laughs> he used to have to stand over me while I slept in the club over there when we still had the Dirty South Slab Riders. I'd go over there and fall asleep on the couch and my dog and, uh, and uh, freight train would be standing over me like, oh my God, we can't go home until in the morning. But I never asked those cats to do that when they had to go to work the next day. Sometimes they say, national, man. And you have to say, okay, okay, go. So this idea that you can't leave, uh, don't let people do that to your, to your heart. Don't let people make you feel bad or guilty because um, you gotta take your butt to work tomorrow or you gotta feed your family. Or your wife says, if you don't bring your uh, behind home, I'm gonna divorce you. Oh, I'm gonna stay with the fellas on the motorcycle club. You don't tell me what to do. Well, I've had a couple of brothers come stay at my house that were going through divorces. And me coming home and seeing them laying on my couch in the middle of the day, and I've been to work all day, that's a, let's just say that you don't want them to stay long. So nobody's going to take care of you like home and family. And in a 99% motorcycle club, home and family come first. And then anything you're doing, self-respect is key. And self-respect comes from demanding. In fact, requiring. In fact, daring an MF to disrespect you. You always require respect no matter what you do. I was surprised I was able to get through that without cursing. Well, I didn't want to take a long time. Big Sales says I'm on this thing too much anyway. Any, uh, any questions? Why mess over a prospect that's going to be in your club? Yeah, that's another one. Why would you mess over somebody? You know, I think it's kind of weird that you would hurt somebody and then uh, call them your brother. It's kind of interesting, but they do it all the time. Let's see. Nothing has changed. They were still prospect like that. Let's see. Be a man first. Okay. Both, both, most presidents don't care. They should care. And it's up to you to make sure that they do. Hey, P7. That's my prospect. Now, P7 stayed with me all night long and watched over me and treated me. P7, I love you. Can't wait till you cross over, brother. This guy watched over me in, in Wichita like uh, my patron saint. I love you to death. All right, listen. Um, Tuesday night is the uh, free um, PRO's course, 1-877-387-8884. 1-877-387-8884. Take that PRO's course, you'll love it. You'll absolutely have a great time. Hey, Clifford, call me, brother, uh, so we can talk about you out there. I need to, I need to, need to talk to you. Um, so hit me up after this so we can uh, shout about you brothers up there in Topeka, Kansas. Love you, brothers. Um, so I'm going to go in here and fries and get myself a, a new headset, you know, so that I can uh, continue to uh, pontificate out here on the phone. It's kind of cool. Um, any more questions? Okay. Well, alrighty then. I'm Black Dragon, and uh, 
all I need you guys to do is get skinny. Take care. Ciao.